Hello, welcome to another session of uh, Q&A with Father Dave, where we seek to answer all kinds of questions, whether they be spiritual, theological, or pastoral, or practical, uh, in terms of things going on here in the parish. As always, I have my two cockatiels behind me, uh, Hissy and Friday. Uh, you may hear them chirp or may comment uh, throughout the video. And as always, my trusted companion Snoopy at my feet, resting, waiting, I think, to go home. It's been a long day. Anyway, as we begin all things, uh, and our question today is about the Blessed Virgin Mary, so I thought we'd offer the very simple but beautiful prayer uh, of the Hail Mary as we gather. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today's question, uh, Father Dave, the Blessed Virgin Mary has so many names or references, such as the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Our Lady of Fatima, etc. Why is this, and how do we clarify this in our minds? We know she is the mother of Jesus, and all the name reference the same person. It can seem confusing. <laughs> Well, I understand how it can seem confusing. You know, the um, um, as we especially all the names and references and titles related to Mary over 2,000 years of her history and tradition, you know, what's it about? Where does it come from? I'd say part of it is uh, really rooted in a very human thing where oftentimes as we come to know people, especially people who are important, either to us personally or maybe even in our world around us, in our culture, sometimes we give them maybe nicknames or things that kind of describe a little bit about that person without always using their full name. Just think in our own culture, some of the, whether it be sports figures, politicians, uh, musicians, etc., cetera, uh, or just political figures from the centuries. For example, you had uh, Honest Abe, Bloody Mary, Sitting Bull, uh, Buffalo Bill, Calamity Jane, Andre the Giant, the King of Rock and Roll, the Queen of Soul, Old Blue Eyes, The Duke, uh, The Man in Black, Satchmo, The Babe. Again, all references that probably most people would know, maybe not our younger folks. Um, but again, they're uh, maybe nicknames or names that associate ourselves, or associate a person with some quality or aspect of who they are. Um, oftentimes with an endearing sense about it. Also another aspect of names, you know, historically, or that names... Um, oftentimes, again, oftentimes had a more direct relation to what the person did or who they were in society. Uh, even some very common names that we have now, you know, any time with a, a, someone with the name is Smith, it's usually related to some type of smithing or working with metal or such things like a goldsmith or a blacksmith. A uh, blacksmith, someone works with iron, you know, black wrought iron, or name a barber. Uh, or, again, a name that maybe uh, characterizes them in terms of the relationship to someone else. You know, Peterson, uh, son of Peter. Um, sometimes a name uh, might even reflect, again, an aspect of who they are. Uh, the last name Amadeo means, you know, the, a lover of God or beloved of God. Uh, so, again, you know, what's in a name? <laughs> um, uh, I think of that wonderful line in Shakespeare, you know, uh, a rose by any other name does smell as sweet. So in the sense of the, the person themselves, the, the quality of what we call it, uh, all points back to the, the person themselves. All this, of course, leading back to Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, again, in all these things, we have to remember that Mary has a kind of a preeminent and unique place in all of history, all history of humankind. She was fully human. Um, she was not divine. She's not God. But the neat, unique gift that she had in being uh, conceived and born without sin and remaining sinless uh, throughout her life was that she had the fullness of humanity unencumbered by sin or brokenness and because of that she recognized the fullest sense of who she was as God desired her to be and created her to be. Now all of us are given that unique gift when we're born into the world and, and baptized into Christ we become totally at one with the Lord um, but our lives oftentimes are fraught with sin and brokenness and pain. Mary was able to overcome all of those things because of her unique nature, her state of grace. As we say, she was full of grace. And because of that, I suppose, we 
uh, acknowledge the very unique and blessed aspect of who she is and by her different words and different titles and references to who she is for us. Um, again, sometimes it's in, in reference to her role uh, in salvation. Uh, uh, you know, we have words from scripture themselves that identified her, um, you know, Hail Mary, meaning, you know, greetings, Mary, uh, full of grace, you know, the Lord is with you. Um, uh, again, the words of the angel Gabriel, um, uh, the words of her cousin Elizabeth, um, you know, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So she's blessed, truly blessed by being, having the fullness of God's presence. Oftentimes, though, we have other words that describe Mary, for example, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Theotokos, the God-bearer, um, uh, uh, all types of different words describing who she is for not only the, a woman of her day, but for the life of the church. We call her the mother of the church, as well as the mother of God, being the mother of Jesus Christ. Um, uh, all types of different phrases and, and things related to her. Um, uh, the cause of our joy, uh, the consoler of the afflicted, uh, the flower of Jesse's root, uh, the gate of heaven. Again, the list goes on and on. I, I googled different titles and, and names related to Mary, and I came up with at least uh, 205, and I'm sure there are many more. And it's not to confuse us, and that's the thing. It's not to, meant to be confusing. It's help us to appreciate the different qualities and aspects of who Mary is. Uh, not only who she was uh, in her day as she lived on earth, but who she is now for us in heaven. Uh, that there's always some aspect of our humanity, uh, even our broken, hurting humanity, that we can turn toward Mary, we can bring to Mary, because we understand that having the fullness of humanity and the fullness of God's blessing and grace, she understands and she can receive that and intercede on our behalf to share that and bring us into deeper communion with Christ, her son. Um, so, you know, all these titles and, and images of Mary hopefully lead us to a deeper devotion and understanding of who she is for us. Not just, you know, uh, the mother of Jesus 2,000 years ago, um, but the woman that she is for us today, um, the woman par excellence, um, and someone who's intimately close to us. She understands the movements of our heart. She understands our, our anguishes, our sufferings, our struggles but also our greatest joys, because she experienced it all in her own humanity. Um, and so we, we honor her in that special way. So we give Mary praise uh, uh, and honor her, venerate her, uh, because of all that she uh, was in her day, but who she is for us today. So I hope it's not confusing for you, um, you know, but maybe encourage you to uh, find a title or Mary uh, of Mary uh, or a name associated with her, and look into that, research it a bit, um, and explore maybe the, the message that she has for you and for your heart today. So that does it for today. Again, we thank you for all your questions. Please keep them coming in. Uh, we love to have them. May God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead.